Breaking news right now, brand new Fox News GOP polls for Florida and Ohio released just seconds ago. Take a look at this. John Kasich now ahead of Donald Trump in Ohio. Remember that. It's winner take all. Kasich now leading by 34%. Uh, he's got 34%, followed by Donald Trump at 29%. Ted Cruz at 19%. And Marco Rubio down at 7%. But Trump, he remains on top with a commanding lead in Florida where he's at 43%. That's 23 points ahead of Marco Rubio, followed by Ted Cruz at 16 and Kasich at 10%. Let's dig a little deeper. Let's start with Florida. Here's the story. 63% of Republican voters there say they feel betrayed by their party. Does that sound familiar? Well, maybe this explains Trump's powerful lead there because 49% of the voters uh, that feel betrayed say Donald Trump is their man. That's more than 30 points above any other candidate. All right, there's some possible hope, uh, rays of hope, guys, I want to tell you for Marco Rubio in Florida. Just 8% of voters there list Donald Trump as their second choice. Marco Rubio is at 20%. So maybe, just maybe, if anyone changes their minds, he'll be the first one up. And look at this. This is really interesting. 56% believe that illegals uh, should be legalized and allowed to work in the United States. So maybe that gang of eight thing that's killed them everywhere else, maybe it could help them in the state of Florida. Now, Kasich in Ohio, again, he's the top choice and he's the second choice. That's critically important because that means, uh, you know what, people who aren't thinking about him, he's really, who haven't chosen him yet, he's very near the top of their list. Well, let's hash it all out, guys. I've got an amazing panel to help me start it out. You're looking at the all-stars right there. Monica Crowley, Tammy Bruce, and Mark Serrano. Monica, i got to go to you first. I mean, I'm glad you came in. Uh, you know. Thank you for having me, Charlie. Right. The polls are interesting, and I, and I know some people become somewhat maybe skeptical, even cynical of them, but they tell a story for the most part. And I think the story here, Ohio very competitive still. Florida maybe not so much. Yeah, I mean, polls give you a snapshot of where the voting electorate is at any given moment, but you can piece them together and they do establish a trend. This Florida poll uh, by Fox News is particularly striking to me because the gap is so huge between Donald Trump and Marco Rubio. Now, we know, we've known that Trump has had a substantial lead for a very long time, so this is nothing new. But the fact that Marco Rubio has essentially collapsed over the last week is reinforced by this poll in his home state. If he is trailing by this much, it's not only over for him in this race, but it might be over for his political career going forward. Right. He has to tread very carefully right. and start rethinking going forward, even from this day forward. Mm. Tammy? Well, look, I think that uh, especially after Michigan and the Democrats, when you talk about polls and how wrong they can be, uh, that's the problem. Uh, but when it comes to Kasich especially and Mr. Rubio, you're also looking at numbers that aren't necessarily even assimilating what's happened uh, in the last couple of days, plus anything that will happen over this weekend leading up to Tuesday. Every day is going to be watched. We've got, you've got the debate. You've got, uh, you've got uh, the other ads that are hitting. You've got, uh, you know, the... Uh, Things like Carly Fiorina's endorsement of, of, of Ted Cruz. Right. You've got a bunch of other things that are leading into this. And the late deciders do break in a particular way for, not for Mr. Trump, but for Florida, I think that's gone. The issue becomes Ohio. Uh, and Mr. Kasich tends to be underestimated sometimes. I mean, by the same token, yeah. uh, early voting has substantially gone to Donald Trump in Florida. And that, by the way, got him over the, the finish line before everyone else in a couple other states. So that might prove to be the difference here. Let's go to the man himself, though, who helped put this poll together, Darren Shaw. He's a GOP consultant who does the polls for Fox News. Darren, I uh, want to start with, uh, with uh, Florida. Uh, you know, on the surface, 4320, Trump over Rubio looks like a disaster. As I dig through this and I see uh, a different sort of mindset there with respect on how to treat illegals, uh, maybe legalizing them, allowing them to work, also a second choice. Is there just a sliver, and I'm talking a sliver of a chance that Marco Rubio can make up the difference between now and next Tuesday? Man, it's, there's a sliver of a chance, and you've got to combine some of the things you were talking about, Charles. The issue content of the poll, which suggests that immigration isn't as cutting an issue, at least in Trump's favor in Florida, the way it has been in other states. You have to combine the one-fifth of the electorate that says they still might change their minds. And then you have to hope, if you're Rubio's camp, that you know, we're off, that our margin of error is favorable to him, and we're off by a couple points. So you know, maybe it's not uh, you know, 15, maybe it's only 10. But that's, that's a lot of ifs. Yeah, well, I, I guess after uh, with the, the upset that Sanders pulled off in Michigan last night, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're hoping for, the, for uh, something to happen, you, you've actually saw it happen. Let's switch to Ohio for a moment. 
Uh, Kasich at 34, Donald Trump at 29. What I find interesting is that Kasich's job approval or performance approval, approval is there at 79%. That's absolutely huge. Shouldn't that reflect it with a higher number over, the, over his rivals? Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting point. My sense is, is that this, this Ohio race is kind of sliding towards Kasich. And I don't want to overinterpret a single poll, as, as your panelists have said, as a snapshot in time. But you look at Kasich's approval numbers as, for, as governor of Ohio versus Rubio's approval numbers as a senator in Florida. And that tells a huge part of the story. Uh, you know, we're only talking about Republicans who are likely to participate in these primaries, but they love him in Ohio, which at least gives him a basis for kind of assaulting Trump and getting in the race. Rubio doesn't have that in Florida. So, you know, I, I, the comparison there is really instructive. If I could add, you've got the Floridians have known Marco Rubio for years and years. He's a known quantity, so those numbers should be pretty stable. It's not like he's going to surprise them in the next few days. But Governor Kasich now is the problem of everyone knowing he will not be the nominee not through this normal process. So will they begin to think about who is really moving forward here? What are we doing? It's not just about the fun of, of once again voting for your governor. This is about the presidency right. and where is the momentum? We've, so, we've seen that, Darren, in, in, uh, in some exit polls here where people are now saying, hey, I'm voting for the person I think can win in November. Should that have a, an impact on Ohio and Florida to what degree? Well, you know, the polls have been a little inconsistent uh, with respect to Trump standing against Hillary versus, you know, Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio or John Kasich. They, they have been, I say inconsistent, but he tends to pull worse than those other candidates. You've narrowed the field down to four, and it may be even shrinking even further after next Tuesday. I think it's reasonable for Republicans to begin to look at their choice set and ask themselves, you know, what are we doing here? I mean, what, what's the end game? And I think it's the, but it's the obligation of the, uh, the, the second, third, and fourth place finishers to make that case and to make it cogently, because Trump's the one who's been more, most aggressive on the polls so far. Uh, Mark, let me bring in Mark Serrano. Mark, uh, again, it looks like this Ohio thing is going to go down to the wire. Are you expecting anything different in Florida? Could there be an upset in your mind? I don't think so, Charles. Uh, look, that, that approval rating uh, for Rubio at 49% is among Republicans. That's a terrible number for a sitting senator in his own state. And I don't believe that there's enough time. Now, the thing that Trump's got against him is tens of millions of dollars, at least $10 million, being spent in negative ads against him. Uh, but on the other hand, Ted Cruz actually needs Donald Trump to win in Florida, you know, for him to be able to get Rubio out of this race. So I do not see enough changing, enough of the underlying dynamics, particularly that terrible approval rating uh, for Rubio in his own home state. The other thing is we see very high numbers uh, in exit polls for the primaries thus far, are people angry at government. And look, of the people on the ballot, Donald Trump, of the four remaining candidates, is the one who is not in government. Well, and yeah. I think that plays a very big factor. Far and away, there's absolutely no doubt that's going to play a role uh, next Tuesday, and it's already playing a role. My